you're making money, you know, cleaning this up for loved ones. Do you ever get pushback or people that feel like you're, you're cashing in from, from people's deaths? I'm Gerard Adams, and this is Gray Area, where we follow entrepreneurs doing business in the margins of society. Today we're going to be meeting up with Michael Wiseman, the founder of a crime scene cleanup company here in Massachusetts. With every crime scene, the coroner takes the body, the police collect the evidence, and Wiseman is responsible for everything else. I sat down with him to get a better sense of the industry and just how much business his company sees. Our daily calls, our phone probably rings between 30 and 40 times a day, whether that's just doing cleanups for police departments and cells and cruises or street scenes, people that get hit by cars and things, to natural deaths. Um, we do work for hospice um, when they get a situation in the house. And then suicides, unfortunately suicides, and they run rampant at different times, different seasons, but they happen every day, right? literally every day. A call did come in shortly after our interview. It was a fentanyl overdose in a hotel room. Within a few minutes, Michael had mobilized his team and we were on the road. So yeah, so I've been doing dead bodies for almost 30 years. Without getting too into it, I started this business because something happened in my family and I get a call from a family member that says, hey, you know, so-and-so passed away, right. I need some help. I'm 22 years old, you know, I'm in a t-shirt and guest jeans and it's like, yeah, whatever, come pick me up. We get to the relative's house and we get downstairs, it's just a huge pool of blood in the basement and we clean it up. I get out driving down 495, my shirt's covered in blood, I got these big red circles on my knees. I'm literally stripping, throwing things out the window on the highway. I get home, I go to sleep in the morning, I start, you know, saying things to my wife, like, you know, hey, what, you know, how come they didn't call anybody? How come the family's so cheap and, you know, they didn't do this or that, and they're like, hey, they called like 50 companies. No one out there cleans up blood. You should start a company that does that. Today, 24 Trauma has over 100 employees and four offices across New England. A large portion of the company's revenue comes from fentanyl cleanup. When we arrived at the overdose scene, Michael made it clear to me that I would be going in. All right, so Gerard, we're gonna dress you up like one of the guys that we're gonna throw into the, the pool of whatever it is. In this case, it's fentanyl. Synthetic opioids like fentanyl were responsible for almost 30,000 deaths in 2017. Before entering any fentanyl contaminated area, Wiseman and his team go to great lengths to ensure their safety. Let's go get them. So get that door shut. So this is where the fentanyl is, and we don't want to get too close. You can see the powder on the corner right there. Not only does the fentanyl need to be neutralized, but all items with the porous surface must be removed from the hotel room. Otherwise, future guests could be exposed to trace amounts that have been left behind. So all of this will have to go. So the next scene, they'll bag up the box spring and mattress and that'll be disposed of. Then we'll start from the corner of the room and work our way out, and they'll take every inch of the rug that's in the room. So, and nothing leaves the hotel that's not bad. Everything gets bad. So you've cleaned a lot of rental cars and hotel rooms. Has it changed your perspective at all when you use some of those? It definitely does. So when I go into a hotel room, and I do like to travel, and I'm in a lot of hotel rooms, yeah. I check places that you wouldn't even think about. You know, if I see any type of splatter that doesn't look right to me, or I see any new fresh paint and it's only in a small area or something's been regrouted or redone, I change rooms. Wow. So how, how much is a job like this, man? How so, much is this job? So we build time and materials. I won't know till it's over, 100%. Great. Ballpark, this will be probably between four and 5,000. Four and 5,000 yeah. dollars. Some jobs can be as expensive as $100,000 depending on what's involved. I wondered how Michael actually went about collecting payment, especially when dealing with family members in grief. How do you, from a revenue, like just from a business standpoint mostly, right? Like this is something where you're making money, you know, cleaning this up for loved ones. Do you ever get pushback or people that feel like you're, you're cashing in from, from people's deaths? So that's know, another, how do you deal that's, with that society? It's another great question. So the only time I've ever heard that, and oh, I've heard it many times, it's never from anyone that's used our service. Right. Because when you have this happen to you, the last thing you want to do is go clean up a loved one, your grandmother, your grandfather, right. God forbid your, you know, your, 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 your spouse or a child. So I've never had that from the people we've worked for. Right. Somebody on the outside looking in might say, hey, you got to be kidding me. These people are charging for that. But if we didn't do it, who would do it? Michael is a natural salesman. 
but it was clear he cared deeply about his work. His reputation is so well known that law enforcement agencies from across the country seek his advice. On the way back from the fentanyl overdose, Michael received a call about a scene some 1,200 miles away. So uh, you definitely reached the right person. I'm sure I can help you. Just give me a little bit on uh, what you got going on. Yeah, so what we've got is in the state, apparently this is the first house that has had fentanyl in the powdered form that where it was actually found in the house kind of spread around. So when you say powder, so is he manufacturing? Is he making? Is he cutting? Do you know how cutting. it's being spread? He's cutting. What he was doing was putting them in inhalers and then shipping these inhalers out to people. Wow, that's ingenious. Yeah, yeah so I, there's a lot of ways I can help you. I mean, obviously, if you know, if need be, I, you know, I'm 15 hours from you, but I would be fine with getting a crew down and sending a crew down if that's what needed to be done. Um, sure. If I could get photographs and stuff, I could walk somebody through it. I could make you an outline. Sure. You know, there's nothing I can't help you with. You just have to let me know what you guys want to do. Crime scene cleanup is a business. After spending the day with Michael, that was clear to me. But I wondered, beneath all the work, how does so much death affect the person? Later that day, as Michael's crew was cleaning up another scene, I got my chance to ask him. So Mike, you deal with death all day long, but like, I'm curious, like, what are your actual beliefs about death and how has death impacted your life? Obviously dealing with death, you get a different, uh, you get a different view of it. Um, I know I've been in situations where I've definitely felt presence when I've been in a house wow. with multiple people that have passed or been killed. You have that feeling that uh, just that, whether it's that breeze or that the air is thicker. And the biggest thing is too, is I've seen how short life is and how you have to appreciate every day, live every day like it's your last. We do people every day that never knew they were gonna die. Right. Especially the 17, 18, 22, 25 year old people. Yeah. The one thing this job has taught me and showed me is that life is so fragile. Michael Wiseman is a pioneer. He has built a successful company by handling situations not many people are able or willing to deal with. I'm Gerard Adams, and this is Gray Area.